Today I've got a nice functional equation. So our goal is to determine functions from real numbers to real numbers, satisfying the following kind of long complicated functional equation. We've got x times f of x minus y times y of f of y equals y minus x times xy minus one times f of x times f of y. So let's start exploring by evaluating this at a free variable and then a number just to see what we get. So the classic thing to do would be to set x equal to just itself, and then we'll set y equal to zero. So let's see what sort of simplification effect that has. Okay, that's gonna give us x times f of x, and then this y will cancel out. And then over here, we'll have negative x times minus one. So that'll just give us x times f of x, times f of zero. So that's what it all simplifies down to. And now another thing let's notice is that this functional equation actually holds for the function that is identically zero. So that's maybe our first solution. So solution I'll call it number one is the function which is identically zero. So in fact, we're really looking for interesting solutions which are the ones where it's not identically zero. So that means we should maybe take this and we'll pick x, which is a real number, where f evaluated at x is not zero, and we'll use that to divide both sides by x times f of x. You might say, well, x also has to not be not zero here, but you know, I think that's an okay assumption as well. So that'll give us f of zero equals one. And what we've done is achieved a value for our function under some very limited assumptions. Now, will that be helpful towards our final goal? That's totally unclear at this point. Okay, so let's move into our next assumption or our next substitution. And we'll do that by noticing that x times y minus one is a factor of this right-hand side. But if we can take x times y to be one, then this is all gonna cancel. But that would be like y equals one over x. So let's see what we get for that. So like I said, we'll take x to be our free variable x and we'll take y to be one over x. So clearly x is not a completely free variable because x is not allowed to be zero here. So let's see, that's going to turn into something like this. We have x times f of x minus one over x times f of one over x equals zero. That's because that whole right hand side like collapses. But now we can move some things around here real quick. And after moving some things around, we'll see that f of one over x equals x squared times f of x. And so that's pretty nice, I think. That actually gives me a hint as to maybe what the final picture looks like because there's a kind of a standard family of functions that satisfies this type of rule, and that would be f of x equals one over a quadratic polynomial in x. So I'll write this as capital AX squared plus capital BX plus capital C. So it seems like, maybe we'll write that here, seems like, we have f of x is equal to this. But that's not a huge restriction here. Maybe we can get a better restriction. So let's in fact work towards a better uh, restriction. And we'll do that by doing something similar to this first substitution. Let's take x equal to x and we'll take y equal to one. Let's see what that gives us. So why am I picking one? Well, you know, the two simple things to plug into these types of functional equations are zero and one. So we're just working through these simple substitutions. So that'll leave us something like this. We have x times f of x minus f of one equals, let's see, we'll have one minus x times x minus one times f of x times f of one. 
And in fact, we can move some stuff around here. So let's multiply both sides by negative one. That'll leave us with f of one minus x f of x equals, now we'll have x minus one squared. So let's write that. So x minus one squared f of x f of one. And perhaps now we could solve this for f of x. So let's do that. So we'll move everything with an f of x to one side of the equation and everything without to the other side of the equation. That'll leave us with x minus one squared f of x f of one plus x f of x equals f of one. But now we can solve this for f of x and what will we end up with? We'll actually end up with this, and I'll skip a couple steps, but it will be of this form. We'll have one over x minus one squared plus a times x, where a, where a is equal to one over f evaluated at one. So I think that's like a kind of a nice simplified way to write this. Now what we'd like to figure out is what's this value of a? Well, in fact, we can check, and I won't do this on the board because it's really just a bunch of like tedious algebra, but what we can check is that the functional equation, so let's write that down, functional equation holds for all values of A which are real numbers. Okay, so does that mean that all of these are solutions? Well, it kind of depends. Notice here we're saying our domain is all real numbers. But there's most definitely values of A that would not allow us to have all real numbers of the domain. For instance, if A was equal to zero, then X equals one would not be in the domain. If X is, was equal to something like four, then this would turn into X plus one quantity squared and negative one would not be in the domain. So for instance, we do not want this denominator to be equal to zero. So that means we need x minus one squared plus ax to not be zero. But let's multiply that out and collect terms. That'll give us something like this, x squared plus a minus two times x plus one equals zero or not equals zero. But when is a quadratic equation not have a real root? Well, that's exactly when the discriminant is negative. So we want the discriminant to be negative. So remember that the discriminant is the thing inside the square root when we do the quadratic formula. So that means we need a minus two squared minus four times a times c to be less than zero. So in other words, we need a minus two squared to be less than four. But what does that tell us? That tells us that a minus two is on the interval from minus two to two. Okay, but then we can add two to both sides and we'll see that this means that a is on the interval from zero to four. So these are the values of a that allow us to have a domain of all real numbers. And that would be like our final solution. So our final solution would be all functions of this form where A comes from that interval right there. I guess furthermore, you could take more generous values of A if you were okay restricting the domain, but let's just say we don't wanna restrict the domain here. So I've done some other functional equations on the channel. You should maybe check the one out that's on the screen right now. And that's a good place to stop.